The injury monster rears its ugly head. Marcus Mariota is elite. What? And tight ends are so hot right now. This is week two of Keepers. Hey, fantasy freaks, I'm Susanna Collins. Welcome to week two of Keepers. Man, first week was a doozy, right? I'm still recovering. If you had guys like Julio Jones in your lineup, high five. If you're like me and we're counting out a big season from Des Bryant, well, you probably need a hug. But my friends, that is the way of fantasy football. One week you're on top, the next week you're Jameis Winston. Those are the breaks. With that said, here are my week two sits and starts. Start Carson Palmer. Yeah, the guy has the knees of an 85-year-old, but you know what? He looked pretty darn good against the Saints last week, throwing for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. Plus, he seemed super comfortable throwing to his old buddy Larry Fitzgerald, connecting with him on six passes for 87 yards. Pair that with the fact that they're taking on the Bears and their non-existent pass rush? Could be a nice day for the old man. Sit Jeremy Macklin. He had a decent start with the Chiefs pulling in five catches for 52 yards. Hey, not bad for a wide out in Kansas City, right? The problem is that the Chiefs are taking on a Broncos defense that was super stingy against the Ravens receiving core. Not one of them had more than 25 yards. Macklin's also been limited in practice this week with a back injury, so even if he wasn't going up against a stifling defense, his production probably wouldn't be so great. Start Mark Ingram. The most impressive part of the running back's performance against the Cardinals last week was that 98 of his 122 total yards came from the air. Drew Brees found Ingram eight times, proving that the broken hand he suffered last season is clearly not an issue. With C.J. Spiller expected to miss more time, the versatile Ingram could put up some big numbers against a woeful Tampa Bay defense. Sit Deion Lewis. The Patriots will be up against one of the strongest run defenses in the league on Sunday against the Buffalo Bills, who only allowed 64 rushing yards against Indy. If what they were able to do against the Colts didn't convince you that this Bills team is legit, then I don't know what will. Also, with LeGarrette Blunt returning from suspension, Lewis will likely see fewer carries. Give him a rest this week. Start Greg Olson. So tight ends had a heck of a week one. Olson though, yeah, not so much. He had one of his worst games since 2011 with one catch and only 11 yards. Yeesh. Now, he was only targeted three times and I anticipate that will change against the Texans. Hear me out on this one. Mike Shula has said that the plan is to get him involved much more this week and Olson has been one of Cam Newton's most reliable targets. Call it a hunch, but I expect Olson to rebound from a disappointing game and put up some decent numbers. Sit Frank Gore. To say week one for the 32-year-old running back was a disappointment is a gross understatement. The Colts' offseason prize carried the ball only eight times for a measly 31 yards. Now, to be fair, he was up against that tough Buffalo defense where running backs go to die, but it won't be that much easier this week against the Jets defense that dominated the Browns and ruined Johnny Football's big day. Damn you, Jets defense! Buy low on Kenny Stills and sell high on Ladarius Green. Stills was only targeted three times for one catch against Washington. With the Finns fairly deep at wide out, lots of fantasy owners pulled the plug on Stills this week, but he's got plenty of upside and can still put up some big numbers. He's a nice little pickup on the cheap. As for Green, he had a solid week one, but with Antonio Gates set to return in week four and Keenan Allen apparently returning to form, the Chargers are stacked with receiving options and Green likely won't see as many targets. Get something good for him now while you still can. Buy low on Lance Dunbar and sell high on Marcus Mariota. So Dallas is pretty stacked at the running back position, but Dunbar's versatility was on display last week with 70 receiving yards. With Des Bryant out for the better part of the season, suddenly Dunbar becomes more valuable as a dual threat. As for Mariota, my goodness, hard not to be impressed with that young man's NFL debut. Four touchdowns and a perfect passer rating? It's the stuff dreams are made of, but that's just it. Unfortunately for Marcus, he can't play his good friend Jameis and the Bucks every week, and he'll likely come crashing back to reality when he's up against a real NFL defense. Sell him now while the dream is still alive. Hire Dante Moncrief and fire Marcus Colston. So even if T.Y. Hilton didn't go down with a bum knee, I'd still be high on Moncrief. Andrew Luck targeted him 11 times against the Bills, second only to Hilton. He managed to rack up 46 yards, and with Hilton on the sidelines, you can look for Moncrief to pick up that slack. Marcus Colston, on the other hand, ugh, I said it earlier this week and I'll say it again, this guy is just not the player he once was. Against Arizona, he made a mess out of an easily catchable pass that ended up being intercepted and he seems to have lost the ability to kick it into another gear to separate from defenders. Time to cut this guy loose. 
hire the Broncos defense and fire the Packers defense. Now, if you checked out our waiver wire edition earlier in the week, I sang the praises of Denver's D and my position remains the same. They are stacked against the run and the pass rush just all around. They're going to be a nightmare for quarterbacks. On the flip side, the Packers defense made Matt Forte look like Walter Payton last week. And with Marshawn Lynch and the Seahawks waiting in the wings with a little redemption on their minds, yeah, time to sack the pack. <laughs> you see what I did there? Thanks for watching, Keepers, guys. Oh, and my apologies for the Ryan Tannehill advice last week. Totally my bad. But hey, at least I didn't tell you to play Peyton Manning. Set those lineups. We'll see you next week.